Hi, I'm Karen in the woods. Welcome to my she shed. This is where all my magic happens. I call myself a fiber artist. I enjoy weaving, spinning, knitting, crocheting, and most of all, quilting. So we took this single stall attached garage with a mud room on our old farmhouse and made it into my she shed. So we keep a TV going in the corner. Steve joins me down here on the big leather couch. We look out the windows over our acreage to the back. We live next to a nature preserve, a piece of property that's in a land trust that butts up to a migratory bird sanctuary. There's Nick, he keeps me company. My sewing desk and a couple of my weaving looms, as well as my cutting table. So now that you've had a little look around, it's time to get started loading up a quilt. Ooh, whip you right around here. The first thing I'm going to do is load up the batting on the bottom beam that we've added to this Hinterberg frame. And I'm going to take it off. It's a lot easier to add batting at the top edge than while it's down here. There we go. We added this beam. They don't normally come on a Hinterberg frame. It's just an extra piece of conduit with threaded ends. What I'm gonna do is put it in up here at the top to make it a little easier to wind it. So I'm going to extend out what's normally the beam that the quilting top goes on and use that spot. I'm just going to slide out the other beam. And just get it out of the way. There we go. And now I can put this one in its place. Oops, sorry camera. Now I can load up my batting without having to bend over so much. These are my important pins for when I put the other beam back on. Now, most people center their quilts in the middle of the frame, but I'm not going to. I you know, kind of bring it down to one side that allows me access to get in and out of the bottom of my sewing machine to change the bobbin. So this is going to be the quick method of sticking a batter onto a beam. I use painter's tape because the batting really doesn't matter. It's not precise like the backing or the top. I pre-fold my batting and my other fabrics with the help of my husband in a fan fold design on the floor. It's important to put it scrim side up. And that's the bottom side has scrim on it. It's how it's needle punched together. So when this quilt batting comes up onto the surface, we need the fuzzy side up. So we're going to slide this down right about here. I'm just going to tape it on without pulling or distorting or yanking it. There we go. I 
and there's my batting. We'll center it out. Okay, now we're rolling it up on the bean. I do a couple rolls, and I come back and smooth it out a little bit. A peaceful Monday morning in my she shed. The sun is shining. It's an October morning and we're having unusually warm weather here in Wisconsin. Nick has to always see what I'm doing. There we go. So that's done now. And I can put it back where it belongs on the lower part of the frame. Okay, I believe it goes that side in first. Then that side, and then I have some little plastic knobs here. Just a few rotations. Keep it from falling off. There we go. Okay, that one's done. Now we can put the quilt top beam back on. Drop it into place. And drop that one into place. For now, we're going to swing that down out of the way because next I'm going to do the backing. And that goes on this roller. Now I do have a device on here that's called Red Snappers. Inside each of my leaders, there is a little sleeve and in there is a solid piece of red plastic. We put the edge of the batting or the backing on there and this snaps right over it like so and it will hold it into place. Kind of show you. It's kind of a little horseshoe shaped or half circle shaped kind of snap. There you get an idea. Inside of the leader is a plastic bead about the same diameter. So I just use that as an example. So what we need to do now is get our red snappers into place so we can grab them as needed. And here is the quilt backing. This is a beautiful hunk of flannel that's made to look like birch bark or tree bark. Got to add Joann's, the extra wide flannel. And we have to be sure this is put on in the proper direction. So as it unrolls, it's upside down going through the machine. Okay, now I'm going to hook the leading edge of my fabric up to the beam so it's wound on upside down that way when it's being quilted it is facing downward now what they give you with these red snappers are cute little pieces to help you hold it into place to get everything figured out Okay, we are pretty far down here. 
So I think I'm going to move it over a little. Like I said, this backing is wider than the quilt. And I was going to chop it off, but I figured if I had excess on the side, I could maybe make a couple pillows and quilt them too. Okay, so now we're ready to start. What I do is I kind of tighten that up so it doesn't rotate on me. And here's the first red snapper going on. Now, what I've learned is you don't push down. You're going to bend these conduit poles. Instead, you squeeze with your hand from underneath the pole to the top of the pole. Because if I just go by and push, 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 it's going to bend my poles. When you buy these Hinterberg frames, they're just the wooden legs and you buy the length of pole you need. So if you want 10 foot wide quilts, eight foot wide quilts, six foot wide quilts, that's the length of pole. I have two sets of poles for this, a shorter set and this longer set. This one's capable of doing a king size. But I have the shorter set if I ever have to move to a smaller apartment or a condo down the line, I can set it up in a smaller room. Now, when you buy these red snappers, they come with various sizes. So I use what I need for this particular width of backing fabric. And there we go. That one's all on. Now I'll loosen this up a little bit. And I'll open up the brake, the little cog. And we'll do a couple turns. Tug, tug. Do the same over here. This is a lot easier than when I used to pin all of my quilts onto leaders. And for a while I considered getting the zipper type leaders. Then you have to sew the zippers onto the quilt or pin to the zipper leaders. And what if you didn't get it centered exactly where you wanted it? So I decided the red snappers made a lot more sense. So if you just Google red snappers or look on YouTube, that's how I learned to use them. But boy, oh boy, it sure winds up fast, as you can see. Making sure I have no wrinkles. And my music in the Hope background. You don't mind. This is some that I borrowed from some of the composers that Andrea Good, Adria Good, has on her YouTubes. They're in the public domain. So I downloaded some of them. They're so beautiful. And I just played them from a little flash drive on the back. USB port on my TV. Boy, when I think of what I used to do with my little handy quilter frame, with a plastic frame with little poles clamped down to a banquet table, and I used to quilt on that. That's all I had with my domestic Janome machine, which had a throat about that long. 
From there, I went to a Hinterberg frame with a mid-arm genome, which to me was wonderful. I still had to free motion everything. No stitch regulator. And then one day I decided to up it to a Voyager, which is a no thing, nothing computerized. It's just a bare basic machine, but it does have stitch regulator, which means the faster I move the machine, the faster the needle goes. The slower I move the machine, the slower the needle goes. It keeps all the stitches the same size. I think the mailman's here, or UPS. No, that was Steve coming in the front door, because he doesn't want to appear on my videos. So here we are. We are now done with the backing fabric. Ta-da! So see, this is rolled on inside out, so when it rolls forward to that end, it's upside down. So the bottom of the fabric is on the right part of the quilt. So now that that one's done, now I can raise out this front beam to wind on my quilt top. Let's see here now. There we go. Again, why should I bend over that far when this frame accommodates me to pulling it out this far? And the extra two little clips, which I've lost before, you can order more from Nolting, have to go in here to keep this roller from falling out when it's in the down position. Those are where they belong. Okay, time to get out some more red snappers and we're going to do the quilt top. This quilt top is a pattern by Patty Carey and I'm using Stonehenge Fabrics by Northcott. I think that's kind of centered. Let's see in the camera. There we go. I made this once as a wall hanging. Hanging. And now it's in my daughter's cabin up north. It matches perfectly. So now I've made it again, this time as a larger quilt, a queen size, extra long for an our motor home, which is all. which is all in creams and grays and beiges. So I'm going to put the bottom of the quilt on first. So the top of the quilt is where I'm starting because it is directional. There are pine trees that I want to quilt up and down. And we are going to start with these cute little clips. up so the plastic piece is to the top of the beam that's in the casing and we have to look at our batting down below to make sure we are centered kind of on our batting and it looks like I have to go down a little bit more This is so much easier. And pinning and unpinning and pinning and unpinning. Okay, I think I'm pretty good. So now we're going to put on our red snappers. Here we go. Thank you. 
Then while I'm doing the actual quilting on the quilt, when I get down to this end, just pull the snapper free and the quilt just lays right there on top of the batting and the backing, which are suspended between the rollers under tension. And you just finish up the last few inches using a couple pins just to hold it steady. pieces, which shows my backing and my batting are wider, I use more pieces, than the actual quilt top. Now this top's already been pressed and starched and should be in pretty good um, order to wind it up. So let's start. Okay, now it's time to start winding it on. Let me do just a couple rolls. Snug it over. Now this is the one we want as smooth and evenly wound on as possible. With the pattern evenly working back and forth lined up on the beam. So now I'm in a row with my batting here. I'm in a row with my batting here. And the backing is extended beyond each side just fine. Every now and then, I snug it up just a little bit more in the middle to offset the tub that's on the sides. Look at the beautiful colors as it's winding on. I will install a still shot that I took of just the top once I get all the strips together. Right here. And then of course, once the quilt is all done, I will have that at the end of the video. Now it's important that this rolls up smoothly with no wrinkles or kinks, because it may be on here for a couple days while I do my quilting. Sometimes I've had things sit on here for a couple months. If we take off and travel, I might be halfway through working on a quilt. Ooh. During the winding process, you can tighten up a knob on the end, and that helps me to come through and give it a little tension. There's a couple little pieces of fuzz and lint and string. in the house. We do have dog hair. So anybody that buys my quilts, I have to warn them, it's not from a pet free home. They want to dry clean to before I ship it for an additional charge. I will do that if that's an issue for them. But this one isn't going to be sold. I will put my Etsy store link in the description below for when I do sell my quilts. But like I said, this one's going in our motorhome. I collected this fabric while we were on a trip last fall in Canada. After making the first winter solstice wall hanging, the fabric got discontinued and I hadn't been able to find it again to make a quilt. I was a little disappointed. 
So as we were driving through northern area of Ontario, we happened to see a sign for a little quilt shop called Buttons before we reached Sault Ste. Marie. Buttons Quilt Store. It was only a couple blocks off the main drag. So I talked to Steve into stopping. Lo and behold, they have this fabric. I'll put the link to that store also in the description. So I bought what I thought I needed because of course it was in meters, not yards. After I got home, I discovered, uh-oh, I went by the fabric yardage requirements for the wall hanging again, instead of the queen size quilt. So I called the owner, international, <laughs> calling, and she, through email of me sending pictures of the ones I already bought, was able to cut me additional yardages, converting it to US from metric. And I ended up with more than enough fabric to do the quilt. So now I have enough to do a couple throw pillows. And there we are. We're done. Rolling on, that is. Okay, now it's time to go on to our next step. We're going to take this backing and we're going to bring it up to our batting, our back beam. Take up beam, I guess is what it's called. So, we'll just kind of firm that up so it doesn't unwind on us. And now we need to attach it onto here. So I think it's good to bring it up underneath. Let's see how much room I have here. Oh, a little bit more. Let's bring it up to about here. Tighten this one up. There we go. Now it's probably a good idea to kind of start in the middle here. So I didn't grab one of my little pieces. But we'll start again. There we go. So here's about the middle, there's about the middle. That looks pretty good. Bring this up over here. And that looks pretty good. And bring this one up. Over there. Okay, this one I think will move over a little bit. There. So again, I'm squeezing down from the bottom of the pipe to the top of the pipe with my hands, not pushing on the pipe. fabric is a little thicker than the cotton. So I feel it a little bit more. And I'm snapping it into place. Here, we'll grab any sharp ones.
And one last piece. There we go. Okay, now our backing is on. The next step is to pull up the batting. And that has to be pulled up between the top and the backing. We bring this up without trying to put any real tension on it. We're going to loosen up this one now a little bit so we can use, utilize all of the backing that we can. kind of eyeball where we are below on the roller and bring the batting up. And just smooth it out. A couple little pieces of string. So now I'm going to roll this batting a little more taunt. And snug it up a little. There we go. And now for Bring it up carefully. Yeah, this looks a little better on this side. And a little better on this side. Once I get it all kind of placed exactly where I want it. Now I can tighten up each of these a little bit. Not too tight. Make sure I have no extra fuzz or lint. Now I do add a couple extra pins to the top. just until we get started to make sure nothing shifts around. And I take them out before I sew anywhere near close to it. There. We are just about ready. We'll need to thread up our machine and adjust our little tension clamps. These are actually tarp clamps from Menards that I attach to rubber bungee cords with a cord lock stop from like the sweatshirt ends or, string or tote. Ends. I got the cord locks at Joann's. And the stretchy cords are actually from RV tire covers, but you can buy lengths of stretchy cord, I think almost anywhere. But I made them pretty long so I can stretch all the way in for a baby quilt, or I can go wide for a king size quilt, snugging them up, 
short. Okay. The other thing I have, oops, then I dropped it, is a little basket on a hook that rotates with the rollers that I use for putting scraps of string into it as I work. If I snip and change thread, bobbin, whatever. So we're just about ready to get started. Um, I can't do that right now because I need to pull the machine away from the wall and level it. And I'll wait for Steve to come and do that. But as for the stitching, here's some of my ideas. This is what I'm thinking of for on the pine trees, to go crossways on the trunks and then up and down on the triangles and then some swirls anywhere there's sky or mountain rocks. Let's see, so you can see this. We'll go to a white wall here. That's about what I'm going to do for stitching on the tree portions. And then on the mountain portions, I think I'm just going to do up and down jig jags. And then these sky sections, some swirls. We'll see. 